Okay, my friends, and here's a very first view of the Forteza of the Venetian fort here in Rethymno in Crete in Greece. This is the eastern side of the fort. If we turn around, right there we find the only entrance to the fort. Early in the morning we have beautiful views of the eastern side of the fort. You can see some views over here. Towards that direction is the sea and to my left once I enter the fort is the Venetian and the Ottoman old town of Rethymno. Here's another view of the entrance. Let's go through. Let's get our ticket and let's walk around and enjoy the top touristy spot here in Rethymno. You cannot claim to have been in Crete and in Rethymno unless you have visited this fascinating and very historic fort on top of a hill overlooking the old town. Let's go. Okay, my friends, I'm now inside the fort. I'm in the southeastern corner of the fort. Here's the southeastern bastion. You see here, beautifully preserved and maintained and rebuilt by the Greeks. The Venetians built this fort between 1573 and 1580. At that time, at the end of the 16th century, it was quite obvious. It was very difficult for the Venetians to face and to fight the Ottoman Turks, especially the navies of the Ottoman Turks. And they built this huge fort. Unfortunately, the fort did not help. In 1646, the Turks showed up here. They surrounded the fort for 22 days, and finally they took it. And the Turks were here from 1646 to 1898. Let's uh, stay on the eastern side of the fort for a moment, and let's go up these steps. There are places in the fort where you can really walk up on the top walls. Carefully here. Let's go up. Here's a view of the eastern side once again. That's the entrance. Okay, I have uh, made it safely to the top and once again this is the eastern side of the fort. The opening spaces you see here on the walls correspond to a position where a cannon would have been placed right there. And here we find a Greek Orthodox Church behind these pine trees that you see here. This church was built in 1899 in order to celebrate the withdrawal of Turks from Rethymno and from Crete. It's a beautiful church with a small bell tower in the front. This is the rear of the church. And uh, directly ahead of us you see the church of St. Theodore, you can see the bell tower and attached to the church we see a complex of housing for military officers built by the Venetians once again in the 1570s. Now the soldiers were not allowed to live in the fort. 
but the officers were allowed to have their own houses. And you can see the very typical Venetian architecture of two-story houses with a wooden floor right there, separating the floors. And uh, moving towards the western side of the fort, we find this magnificent structure that you see here. It's a square building built by the Venetians as a church, as a Catholic church. And it was converted in 1646 into a mosque by the Ottoman Turks. And it is now a museum. And it is absolutely magnificent inside. Okay, let's now come inside the magnificent mosque and admire its spectacular architecture. Eight arches support a massive 25 meter dome right there. The Venetians did a fantastic job designing this magnificent church, later converted by the Turks into a mosque. That's the mirab that you see, the niche, which faces Mecca, very typical of a Muslim mosque. But look at this beautiful architecture. There's an art exhibit in here, as you can see, photographs hanging from the ceiling. Let's ignore that. I never liked the idea of mosques and churches being used as museums. Beautiful, isn't it? Magnificent. And uh, let's come back a few hours later here at the mosque, or the church, or the museum. Let's come back a couple of hours before sunset in order to videotape the frontal view of this beautiful structure here at the fort. That's the entrance on the left side. And here is the base of the minaret. The Turks added to the church in the 1650s in order to convert it into a mosque. And of course the minaret was later on destroyed sometime in the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoy about this fort is the unrestricted access to the defensive walls. Here's a large part of the walls that you can walk on. You need to be very careful, however. It is very uneven where you step on. And uh, that's the mosque that we saw just a few moments ago. These are the defensive walls I just showed you. And here, there is a large cave dug by the Venetians inside this huge rock. Let's go inside carefully here. It's quite dark, but it's not a deep cave. Right there. Why would the Venetians build such a cave? Well, there's one reason only. This is where they kept the gunpowder. Keep dry in here. So you can imagine barrels and barrels of gunpowder for the cannons that were placed around the defensive walls. The cave is about 30 meters in length. Let's go in carefully. This is the end. There's a small part to the right, but it's very dark. So you can imagine what was happening here around 1646 with Venetian soldiers running in and out of the cave carrying gunpowder to all the positions of the fort 
as they were fighting the Turks. And uh, that's the mosque once again. And here on the northern side of the fort, we find a very large complex of warehouses. There's one part of the complex that survives over here. Let's walk along this warehouse. And once we pass it, we're going to see evidence of the bottom floors of the warehouses that were used by the Venetians in order to store food and a variety of supplies with the exception of gunpowder. You can see there was a huge basement here covered with huge warehouses made out of stone. The warehouses had uh, collapsed. And that's the northern side of the walls right there. Now why were there warehouses here? Well, there's a very simple reason for it. And that's because the door that you see here under that arch used to open up towards the sea. So the large transport ships would come over here would get parked outside the fort and they would transport all the goods into the warehouses that you see here. Now let's go downstairs and let's go for a walk. And here is the door that was used in order to transport the goods into the fort. And here we find a well-preserved warehouse. This is the largest warehouse of the fort. It's kind of an eerie feeling walking through this warehouse. It's about 80 meters in length and light comes into the warehouse from openings on the roof. Now let's exit this warehouse. Here is the door I showed you right there. And on the other side, we'll find a much smaller warehouse with a lot of marble tombstones from a Turkish cemetery here in the fort. The Greeks have accumulated all these tombstones, placed them in here. I don't know exactly what this cemetery was, but it must have been inside the fort. And uh, here is another part of the warehousing complex. This is the bottom floor that you see here. And these massive arches at one time were supporting a wooden floor where all the supplies were kept at. So there must have been tons and tons of supplies here, especially around 1645 supplies were necessary in order to keep the soldiers fed for a long siege by the Ottoman Turks. They only lasted for 22 days before giving up. And uh, this is the southern side of the mosque. The building that you see next to it right there it's actually ruined and it was not used by the Turks but it used to be the main residence of the Catholic Bishop during Venetian times. But here we find another smaller Greek Orthodox Church. This is actually, or it used to be, a Venetian church and it was converted into a Greek Orthodox Church in the 1890s. This is now the Church of St. Catherine. And uh, in the northwestern corner of the fort, we find this, uh, let's say, unattractive building. This was the residence of the governor of the city of Rethymno during Venetian times and also during Ottoman times. 
and the Ottomans in the 17th century installed their hammam, a Turkish bath on the second floor. The Greeks restored this building and it looks to me they tried to save a lot of money because it looks like a square Lego block. Nothing of its original charm and balconies remain. Absolutely nothing. Very unattractive and hardly worth looking at. As a matter of fact, if we turn around here in the front yard, we're going to find some of the original marble that used to go around the windows. Right there. See that? And look at the marble that was used in order to restore the building. Right there. Enough said. Well, let's uh, come back to the same building two hours before sunset so that we can view the western side of the building right there and here we find literally dumped and abandoned about 16 cannons and here on this side of the building we can see the remaining parts of a balcony and this is what I was talking about earlier in the video that the Greeks when they renovated the building they took all the balconies away no Venetian governor worth his name would be living in a house with no balconies all around. It was a status symbol for the Venetians to own a palace or a large residence like this with balconies all around. And this is the only remaining part of one here on the west, western side. Here's a few more cannons on the ground. Okay, my friends, after four hours, it is time to exit the fort, the Venetian fort of Rethimno. Now, I arrived here at about eight o'clock in the morning, and I was one of the first visitors in the fort. I came here early in order to avoid the huge crowds and the noise that comes along the crowds. It is now half past 12, four and a half hours later. And look at the queues at the ticket office right here. It costs four euros to enter the fort, not a bad deal. And the crowds are getting larger and larger. That's the entrance right there. So come as early as you can, bring a lot of water Grab a brochure once you get your ticket with a map and every site that you visit it will make far more sense. This is Vic, thank you for joining me. This was a wonderful tour, I think, of the fort of the Venetian port of Rethymno here in Crete, in Greece. Bye-bye.